Hello everyone and welcome to the latest video on my channel Digger Evans What we're looking at here is a, a truck that I uh, I rusted up and weathered and uh, a wagon off the railway there I don't have a place for it, it's just going to sit in a siding and uh, be ornamental or we could give it away if somebody wants it let me know at the end of this i'll tell you if you want it how to get it uh so what i'm going to do as as i put out earlier was i'm going to try to show you me damnedest how to do this rusting that i do i have put a couple of videos before and they kind of bombed out uh <clears throat> excuse me i don't know why they didn't there seems plenty of interest in in the rusting though so we'll make a start first of all the things we're going to need these are just things that i use you could use somewhat different and get good results i'm just going to show you how i do rusting that ends up looking like this and uh, we'll see how it goes from there you need a sponge kitchen sponge you know one of them scouring sponge just an old one of them an old one don't get a brand new one and use that let it do its uh, let it serve its life out in the kitchen first so it's it, it's worn and bedraggled by the time you get it the older and and more worn out the better now you can use self-closing tweezers like this and nip a piece of that sponge in between the tines like this i do sometimes use this but only if i'm coming in a big area i find it is not what I want to get into little tiny areas and so I use toothpicks or cocktail sticks whatever you want to call them cut the end off split it carefully with a scalpel and wedge the sponge in between the end like that you can see you can see there's a split in that and, and I've wedged the sponge in between it's a tricky procedure it takes a little while to get used to that's one I've already been uh, been using a little while very good now it does take a little while to get used to uh, sorting your sponge out like that but it does work I've got a couple of examples I'm going to show you what what first we'll go to the paints what I'm going to use and what I do use oh I blast I'm knocking stuff over taking a notice of that I use these acrylics Brunel Franklin I got these at B&M Bidings a couple of quid oh no look one, £1.49 a tube and uh, I've got burnt umber and burnt sienna those are the two base colours that I use every time I'm sorry I've got a parrot flying around in here he's, uh, he's acting the goat and messing about and I also use this stuff artist acrylic now the pigment in this one is really really concentrated and so there's a lot of pigmentation in a little small dab of it so you don't need a lot of it and it's not a solid it's a much more liquid consistency than is coming in these tubes so i don't use that first i use that the last last of all to touch up now what you can also use is these from life color this is a dust and rust set and all it is when you open it up it just gives you different colors uh they call them light shadow or rust like this one mm, very 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 yellow dark shadow that's a very deep red color and what's this one rust base color i've used that one quite a bit that's a good one. and light shadow number two and then some dust colors different dust colours they're very good for the airbrush they're very very highly pigmented they're about 16 quid for that set or 15 quid something like that but they are really highly concentrated highly pigmented last forever i'll put a link if you want to buy these if you buy anything using my links it helps my channel out very much anyway i've spent four or five minutes waffling just about the paint but i am trying to get it <coughs> excuse me in depth if you look at this this is a, a little stanchion on a concrete block that i built you can see the obvious things that you'll look for with rust 
uh, it runs down with the rain, it streaks, and the places where rain had sit is what gets rusty first. If we look at this, this tanker, now it's weathered and what have you, and there's a bit of rust on the cap, but when these come to the end of their useful life, and, and they end up sitting in a siding waiting for someone to decide what to do with them, that's when they start sitting and gathering rust in all different places. Uh, same as this, this is one that I got from, uh, let's have a look down here. It's uh, a car transporter or something of that nature on the top of its mission. Uh, to rust this, you gotta look at where it would start to go rusty first, the places to make it convincing. Where would it be rusty first? Well, moving parts don't get rusty the first because moving parts are well oiled, lubricated, and it's only when they start standing still that they will gather, gather rust. But if we look underneath, we've got all this entire area here, and that is a prime target for rust, as you'll never get cleaned. It's throwing water and muck up from down below as it travels along, and that's an easy one to get rusty and it's an easy part to practice on because you don't always immediately see it so you can practice and perfect your technique on there so what I'm going to use first of all is some of this base color now I'm only only using this base color because it's on a large area underneath and I'm going to use a, a larger sponge for that we're just going to dip it in the lid first of all Get a bit, see how, uh, how tacky that is on there. If it's too tacky, we'll have to uh, have to get a bit more liquid. I've got about that, that much on, you see now. And so I'm just going to run along the bottom here quite quickly. Just dabbling it on. Now this, I'm not bothered about coverage. If there's gaps, if there's anything, this is a basic bare-ass base colour that we're not bothered about. We're not bothered about because you're not going to see much of it at all. So we've just dabbed it on with that sponge. That's all I've done. A two minute job. Now if we bring it up to the camera. You can see it's got a little bit of a texture to it there. Off the sponge. A little bit of texture. So put that lid on. Always put your lids on them because if you knock them over you're in lumber aren't you? Now, the next one I'm going to use is this one, the Burnt Sienna. I'm going to show you exactly how I, how I use it. Now, we can use the same sponge, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, there's no fancy and tidy about this. I just squeeze a small amount out of the tube. Dab that onto the sponge. You don't rush with this. The two things you've got to have a lot of is time and patience. If you haven't got either of those, put the job away until you have. Now what I'm going to do is the same thing over again. Can you see that? That's now turning a much more matte, a much more matte colour as it dries. Doesn't matter that it hasn't dried completely. So we're going to start going over with this one. Now I, w I want a better coverage with this one. I don't want, what I don't want is to leave lots of gaps. doesn't matter if there are some gaps because the base colour is underneath, but I don't want it all black showing through from, from below. Now if we look at that, and we get close up, there's quite a bit of texture on that, as you can see there, and running down, quite a bit of texture going on. Now it's wet. And we're going to leave it wet because the next piece that's going to go on is the burnt umber. So it's the same again, just a little squeeze, put a couple of dabs on, leave it there. Now where we've got that, we're going to go back over again. Now we're not bothered about coverage this time, absolutely not bothered, because rust isn't all one colour is it? And we'll just apply that over and over to those areas. And it's mixing, it's blending in 
because we haven't given it time to dry. We don't dry each coat as we go. If you dry each coat, you're just going to make a rub for your own back. As it won't interact properly, it won't blend and it won't look right. Now if we look at that, you can see again, there's plenty of texture on that. So that's a rough old finish. Now that is as simple as it is. Just go along, keep going along until you're happy with what it looks like. If you're not happy, you make a mistake, just clean it off. Just clean it off. Simple as that, just clean it off. Now for me to do all this, it's, there's a good few hours work there. So we're not going to do all that. We're at 10 minutes in and I've hardly done anything apart from waffling on. Other things you can put your rust on, like this in an industrial walkway. Um, again, you've got to think where we'll get the wear and tear, where we'll water shit and things like that. And it's along here, along these bottom rails where the water would sit. Just gently go along. It accumulates in these corners. And it did sit around about the bottom there because the top rail, it would get more paint wear. But not as much rust because people's hands are holding on to it. And again, it's just a matter of just touching on with a sponge and you get the texture. You get the rusty texture just by touching with the sponge. Now, the stickier and more dry the paint gets, the more the rough texture. And you've got to be careful if you're making it really rough, it has to be for something that's no longer in use because people wouldn't, wouldn't allow it to get that bad if it was still being used and there's no hard and fast rules to the, to this just go along with it as you can as you fancy and, and, and make it look make it look something like what you're looking for if you've done it wrong <coughs> excuse me if you've done it wrong or you don't think it's right start again simple as that simple as that just start again each time right and and it's the same with this anything at all that's got steel or metal get it rusted up i've got this this background building here i'll just lift this up this is a little background building i got from scale model scenery building kit painted it up weathered it and put things on like a chimney here this chimney uh another vent chimney more, more like a steam vent pipe and some ladders and things now those are going to get rusty just rusty them up exactly the same where where did where they gather the rust is is on these kind of joints these surfaces and on the tops and it, it's dead easy to do it really is now if you want if you've got a, a double or scale layout and you want this rusty truck uh just let me know in the comments below if there's more than one person wants it uh, I'll have to pick your names out of a hat, but if there's only one person who wants it, just let me know and you can have it. I'll send it to you. We'll sort some of it out via email with swap address and I can uh, let me have your address and, uh, and we'll post it out to you. Now, the last and final bit for what I do with the rust, once I've got it in the position I want as so much as we've got it we've got it going underneath here now this won't need this treatment so much you see that but on areas where it would qualify along these these edges and uh, where it's going to be affected by rainfall from the sky and not rain from coming up from the ground as it drives over it i uh, i use these mig rust effects streaking rust and mig rust wash these are enamels so they're not as easy to get off and you don't because it says streaking effects you don't have to use it for streaking rust you use it how you bloody well want check the notice what it says on the lid so this i've just given a quick shake you can see the color it's very very high pigment is that it's 
really 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 strong stuff so I'm going to use this very fine brush very fine indeed because I don't want a lot of it all over because if you get it all over it'll just completely colour the job completely from start to finish everything you've done will be one colour just get enough enough onto your brush and you get a little area like this where perhaps the rainwater's run down these stanchions runs down here and just runs down gently across there just a couple of those now one of them looks a bit too strong so a bit too much of it so we'll just dab it a little bit with that sponge to absorb some of it and now if we look close you can see you can see the effect it's having the colour where it's running across and if you put that in a few different places you get a good contrast and you can use this one for the same you can use this as your base colour with it being enamel it's a much much thinner than your acrylics and it's more difficult to to sponge effect with but that's all there is to it it's not a mystery there's nothing uh, magical about it at all and like I say if you do want this or you prefer to have this finished and, and on your layout they will run they will run but uh, they don't look right <clears throat> sorry they don't look as good running on a layout while they're this rusty and, and decrepit they're better off sitting in a in a siding somewhere and uh, but if you want any of them just let me know what you want down in the comments these two either one if there's more than one you don't want both then you know let's give everyone one if they want one and uh, we'll see how it goes if there's plenty of you want them we'll uh, we'll draw your names out of a hat so that's all it is that's all it is so you don't have to get somebody else to do your weathering give it a go yourself and i recommend buy some old junk whether it's from ebay or off the internet or wherever even in a a little second hand shop buy a toy car practice your acrylics on an old toy car to get it looking like you want and look at where you think it did rust where the rain sits where it gets damp and all that type of thing and that's all there is to it. it really is that simple that's all for now i do appreciate everyone watching it's been a long video well longer than i normally normally keep you bored for so if you've stuck it right to the end thank you very very much indeed i appreciate each and every one of you for watching and subscribing please do subscribe if it's your first time here and you like what you see Thank you all very, very much. Goodbye, my friends. Take care. Bye for now.